Oh man, oh man, oh man. Today I'm talking about my minimalist, light, tasty little vlogging kit, and it's a crop body. Today, we're talking about this here. Well, actually, what's inside this. This is my light, minimalist vlogging kit, and it's deadly. What is in here? The Rode Video Micro, which you guys know we've been using this since the beginning. This is my favorite mic. It requires no battery, no power, and it sounds pretty good. And then, <laughs> shit. The most important part, the camera. This here, Sony A6400. This is the Ona Bowery bag. Leather, I love it. But we're gonna talk about this camera. So we recently picked up this new Sony A6400 crop body camera. So there's a shitload of reasons why we bought this here particular camera. The first being that Chris and I have obviously have a joint YouTube channel, um, which is great and we love it and it's a lot of fun. The light is changing, fantastic. Sometimes him and I aren't in the same location and if both of us wanna make videos at the same time, having one camera is very difficult when we're in different parts of the world. So we have the A7S II as our main shooter, which you're seeing right now with the 24-70 f2.8 on it. But when one of us goes away, some, the other person needs a camera for both filming. So that's why we decided to pick up this camera. We didn't want to get another full frame camera because they were too expensive. And we wanted something that was small and light that if we didn't end up using it a lot, it wouldn't be a massive drain on our budget. So it had all of the things that we needed in a camera. And honestly, I didn't think we were gonna use it that much, but we have been using it a lot. I'm actually preferring it for certain things over the A7S II, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The second reason why we bought this camera was because we built the overhead rig, which I'll link up here. We needed a second camera. We only had this camera, the A7S II, and we had an RX100, which is great for some things, but in the scenarios that we needed a camera, it wasn't so great. We needed something that had a mic input, so this was a good option. It's light, it's small, and it goes onto the overhead rig really easily. And it has a flip up screen, which is key for the overhead rig so we can see what we're shooting. And the third thing, besides just being a second angle, we wanted to have a backup camera in case something happened to the A7S II when we're on trips. So Chris and I are going on our biggest helicopter trip yet, and we were bringing the A7S II as our main shooter. However, as you guys know, the focus isn't amazing, which is one of the reasons why we picked up this camera. But also, we, that camera's been through the ringer, and I trust that it will be fine, but in the off chance that it's not, I'd rather have a second camera that can get the job done in the bag, in the kit, in case something happens to our main camera. So that's the third reason why we bought it. People kind of said like, why did you downgrade from the A7S II? Well, I don't feel like it's a downgrade. I think that people put too much emphasis on full frame cameras and it really doesn't matter at all. In fact, I'm actually really preferring this camera for certain things over the A7S II, vlogging, run and gun stuff. And you know, if we're going out to a store and we're shooting B-roll or shooting, you know, vlogging in a store, this is a lot more inconspicuous than the A7S II is with this big lens on it. Don't get me wrong, I still love my full frame cameras and for photography, I prefer shooting full frame because I like the look that it gives, but for video, I really don't think it matters that much. So let's talk about this first. What do we got on this camera? First and foremost, it's got a flip up screen, which is fantastic, but if you guys have done any research or heard about the A6400 at all, you'll know that the hot shoe is right here, right in front of the screen, which makes the flip up screen useless. So, oh, chill in there. Shout out to Donna Did It for recommending me this small rig thing. This is called a hot shoe, no, cold shoe. This is the title of what it's called. Hooks onto the hot shoe, screws into where your strap goes, and then sets the mic off to the side so that now you can use the flip up screen and the mic at the same time, which is like, Deadly. This small rig accessory really makes this camera way more usable. I'm rocking the 10 to 18 f4 lens, this is a super wide lens. We went with the 10 because it's equivalent to the 16 to 35 on a full frame camera. So it's giving us basically the same field of view. Uh, the depth of field looks a little bit different, but I don't think anybody's gonna notice. I don't really care. It's got optical stabilization. Uh, the camera does not have in-body stabilization. The lack of IBIS is a bit of a downside, but not enough for me to not get this camera. And then of course we've got the Peak Design. This is the 
This is the, what is it called? This is the Peak Design Leash, so I got this because it's really small. For me, it's really important to be able to slide the strap off easily because we're putting this on a slider or on a gimbal. I decided to pick one of these up, and I've got a Peak plate on the bottom for the tripod or for my camera clip that goes in my bag. Those are my accessories, my go-to accessories for this camera. It's very stripped down, very simple. I love it. I've been using it a lot, especially like sticking it into places where I really wanna expose and compose my footage, that's fun to say, and just kinda of see what I'm shooting. But this is not gonna be a replacement for our A7S II. We're kinda of gonna be using both in tandem. Using the A7S II still for B-roll for these types of shots. Like I said, it's great to have two cameras. So I reached out to you guys on Instagram. We've got a couple of questions about this camera. God damn it, the light. I haven't used this enough to be able to give like a full review or to give you my opinion on the photo side of this camera because as you guys know, I shoot all my photos on the 5D. Is it good for YouTube? Hell yes, it is good for YouTube. Um, this is a deadly little rig, been using it. It's great in the helicopter. It's nice and wide, it's light, it's small, it's pretty affordable. Yes, it is good for YouTube. Um, best accessories slash lenses, standout features that are above the other cameras you use. Accessories, definitely that small rig adapter, Peak Design strap, which I really like, or any other strap that can detach. Uh, the main selling feature on this camera was the flip up screen and the face autofocus. How are you using the flip up screen and the mic? Also, do you miss IBIS? So again, the small rig adapter. And uh, yes, I do miss in-body stabilization, but not enough to not use this camera. You just have to have a steady hand. And then is it worth the price? Yeah, I think it is. But again, I'm used to buying full frame cameras, which are really expensive. So for me, personally, I think it is worth the price. You'd have to make that decision if um, it's in the budget for you. Okay, no lens options for the Sony E crop series. I'm having a really difficult time with lenses. I've been using the G Master 24-70-2.8, which I know is expensive, but it works on this camera and the 16-35, to as well as the Metabones adapter I've been using with Canon lenses with manual focus on this camera for B-roll. What's the most exciting thing about this camera? Uh, for me, flip up screen and face detect autofocus and eye tracking, hands down. Um, how do you guys like it without IBIS tips on handheld shooting? If you are shooting slow motion, you're gonna iron out some shakes anyway. And if you have a steady hand, when I'm shooting B-roll, I put my strap on, <laughs> I put my strap on my neck and uh, I kind of hold it tight like this. So I have like a nice point on my neck, hold it with two hands and just keep a really steady shot. And holding it out like this kind of really stabilizes the camera. So sometimes I'll even like put my elbows into my body like this and that helps uh, steady up B-roll shots or whatever. Comparison to shooting with a full frame camera. Um, for photography, you'll notice a big difference. We actually did an APS-C versus full frame video. I'll link it up here. But for video, the depth of field looks a little bit different, but honestly, like I don't think it is a big deal at all. I think people put way too much weight on full frame versus APS-C, like it doesn't matter. If you can't get the shot with one, you're not a very good photographer or videographer, so. That's my opinion. Um, are you using APS-C lenses with it? Yes, I'm using one APS-C lens, which is the 10 to 18 F4, but I also am using full frame lenses. So the 16 to 35 F4 and the 24 to 70 F2.8, which I already had for the A7S. The only thing is, is that the 24 to 70 is super heavy on this little tiny body. So it almost feels like it's gonna crack off, <laughs> honestly. Um, how fast is the autofocus? It's Jesus fast. So yeah, all in all, great to have a second camera. I've been using it probably a little bit more than the A7S II just because of the focus and the flip up screen. It's been easier. The light is changing a lot. I really apologize for the inconsistency of the color and grading in this video because I just, I wanted to shoot out here instead of in the office. Just, we just got these nice new chairs. So, you know, I wanted to like hang out out here and try out this little tripod. And anyway, boop, boop. I'm gonna leave you with those thoughts. Um, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We will see you on the next one. Chris is gonna be so mad when he watches this video because he hates it when I wear my hair like this. I call it my mullet mania hairstyle. Like, oh, why do you have your hair looking like a mullet all the time? No. Shh. You shush. This is an African milk plant. This is a terrible position.